actually identical to a doctoral thesis at Johns Hopkins. Um, and it uh, includes a tremendous amount of material that came out of litigation, corporate documents from the inside story of what the companies have known. Well, looking at the imports of products, we uh, ADAO found uh, a few years ago that uh, even, to even toys, uh, fingerprinting kit, uh, and other kinds of products contained asbestos. Uh, and uh, so these, these, these kinds of things, there's almost no surveillance to see what's coming into this country that has asbestos. There are limited uh, import statistics, and uh, I put a sheet out uh, at the desk. Uh, those of you who didn't get it can pick one up later. But basically, the uh, products that we import, which are no longer made in the United States, uh, include um, um, asbestos and brake linings and pads, asbestos cement pipes that are used sometimes for water supply, and gaskets that are used in engines and piping systems, uh, from which you can get very high exposure when you're scraping and adhering gasket material off the pipe flange and doing periodic maintenance of the industrial uh, facility. So, uh, another thing we're concerned about is uh, something we call contaminant asbestos. Being a mineral, it occurs as a contaminant with talc and with uh, vermiculite and taconite, which is an iron ore in, in uh, Minnesota. And so there are uh, deaths from mesothelioma in the people that mine these materials. And uh, so we know that they, they can cause asbestos disease, and some of these, like the talc, can be used in consumer products where uh, there's additional concern that uh, consumers are endangered by the use of, of uh, asbestos in these products and not knowing it. So the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, NIOSH, is looking into uh, this whole business of contaminant asbestos. Hopefully we'll have more information in the U.S. Uh, about uh, what are the highest priorities in dealing with that. And in the meantime, uh, well, the state of California has had a a limit on crushed stone. A stone itself can contain asbestos. It's used for road building. And the state of California for 20 years has had a limit on, on the amount of uh, asbestos protection level uh, that can be found in the stone that is not on the road building. It would be nice if we had something like that all over the country. Uh, there, were, you know, there are periodic reports in the literature on industrial hygiene about road building work was exposed in Alaska and elsewhere to uh, significant amounts of asbestos because it's in the crush stone that's used in the road building. Um, and there are 55 countries that have banned asbestos. There are safer substitutes for all the asbestos containing the products. And, uh, and I, I've taken a look at the imports over the years uh, to see what's coming in. And uh, the thing that's most striking about the latest report is that we're getting asbestos yarn and thread coming in. Now, the amount in the year 2009 was one million, uh, I think it's dollars worth, or uh, it's one, so it was one million metric tons. In 2010, it was three million, and in 2011, it was 55 million metric tons of this stuff, asbestos thread and yarn. And in the first five months of this year, it's 80 million metric tons. So uh, I want to know, it's coming from Mexico. And uh, I would like to talk to some of you maybe later about how we can get a uh, look at uh, customs uh, in information and find out the, who is uh, the seller, who are the importers of this material, and what kind of products used in, what kind of workplace it's used in. This sounds like a very serious problem that's just come up uh, as reflected in recent import statistics. Uh, and this is the kind of thing we're going to have as long as we don't have a ban on asbestos in the United States. These kinds of things can happen here to come in and it's perfectly legal. So um, I guess those are the main things I wanted to talk to you about.